I am called Timothy. I am a member of the 1% of active thinkers, trying to increase that number by 1% each week with these um, small broadcasts by sharing my ideas and my thoughts. Let's get into it. I love this. These politicians are unable to lie. The truth is slipping out, reality is expanding, and illusion has nowhere to hide. This week, or was it last week, um, a congressman from Missouri, or Missouri if you're a native, um, actually slipped and told the truth. He said that uh, he had heard that um, when women are, um, suffer from a legitimate rape, that their body actually rejects the sperm and they don't get pregnant. So they, they don't even need abortions. Now, he's apologized for it since, of course. But um, there's a bigger issue. Now, some are saying, well, what he's saying is on the Republicans' platform and they're making a big deal out of that. But that's not even the biggest issue. The largest issue is that there is a form of legitimate rape to the ruling class of this country. Remember, I told you last week, we are on a plantation. And on a plantation, legitimate rape is the master can rape the overseer, indigenous servants, or workers, which they call slaves. Um, so indigenous servants and workers are kind of the same, but you know, there's a little bit of difference. Okay, the overseers can rape uh, women and boys or men of the indigenous servants and the workers. Now the indigenous servants could probably rape each other and the workers would get away with it. And then the workers could probably rape the workers themselves. See, under the plantation, all of that is legitimate. There is legitimate rape. But when you're at that level, so much is done to you, you usually don't do it to each other unless it's just been done to you for centuries and centuries, um, which has been the case. So those are the different forms of legitimate rape. Um, in this society, there is such a thing. And then, of course, you have all human beings um, rape animals. Now, they say that's cruelty to animals, but it happens all the time. Okay, Because the ruling class has created a sick society um, where these kinds of things go on all the time. And um, this society had no things like that before these uh, rulers showed up with their plantation models. Uh, oh, the next issue is please, melanated people. Look, I'm getting close. Stop begging. I saw a woman um, right out of Far Rockaway who this child is not going to be able to get into the new school they made. In New York City, what they're doing is shutting down the schools and reopening them as specialized schools or um, charter schools or just public schools again, right, if it's an elementary school, only um, it'll be with a different staff because the last school failed. And this woman says that my child has nowhere to go and I don't know what to do. I know what you can do. Educate them yourself. Um, I built a website where you can go and learn everything you need to know about English, grammar, writing. If you go to KhanAcademy.org, I believe it is, um, if you just Google Khan Academy, they will teach you everything you need to know for math and science. Plus, you can take a child out and really learn science hands-on. Um, that would be the best way. Uh, if you're melanated, they didn't, they're, all they're going to do is teach your child to hate themselves and to serve them. But the worst part about that is they found cheaper servants. So they're really teaching your child to be nothing. 
um, and you begging them to teach your children, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You begging them to keep your health, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You begging anybody to protect you, you need to be ashamed of yourself. And while we're on that, all you melanated people in New York that are occupying the corner, the dangerous corners, how foolish can you be? You stand on the corner and talk about how you're occupying the corner because you don't want violence on that corner. And then two, two corners down, they're, they're committing violence. As a matter of fact, it happened the other day that two blocks down the store, someone was shot in the store from where they were occupying the corner. Look, these are your children shooting each other, right? Go to your children and tell them, please stop shooting each other and here's what we'll give you to do in place of that. It's time. You melanated people are going to be gone, okay? There'll be so few of us between the ones of us who ascend and the ones of us who are just automatons and savages that they're sweeping off the planet. There may not be any left. So if you want to stay around or live in any capacity, take control of yourself. Take control of your children. They're our children. All of them. Okay. Um, oh, Obama is failing. And... Um, I've talked about this before, but I'm going to stay with our plantation understanding here because that's what we're living on. The reason why Obama was destined to fail, um, and I voted for Obama for my particular reasons, because I felt that people who looked like me needed motivation, and he gave it to them. So I'm happy I voted for him. That's that. I didn't expect anything else from him um, because... When you're on a plantation, you have a master group and basically the worker group. You have in between where you have clerks, overseers and things, but that's all built around the worker group. Um, and members of the worker group can never become master, right? Either you're going to be masters from all, the whole time, or sometimes masters will rape people from the worker group, take the children, keep them in the house, and raise them as the master class or group. But you can't come from the worker group and be a master. And I'll tell you why. Because you're only going to do one or two things. You're going to say, look, the workers are suffering, and now it's my chance, and I'm going to let them go. In which case, the plantation dies. Um, because you have no forced labor or you're going to oppress them even harder to impress your masters and then they won't work and the plantation will die so when Rush Limbaugh said uh, a black man can't be president of the United States he, this is what he was talking about we can't because we're going to do one of those two things and the whole shebang is going to go now what Obama did he's very shrewd he did neither he did nothing he just sits there, he comes out, he speaks, but he doesn't even deal with the worker class. So you have the worker class sitting <clears throat> in the slave houses, <laughs> right? Maybe they do a little bit of work, but for the most part, not working, not doing anything. So the field, the plantation, is kind of just there. It's not really moving forward. It's not really moving back because, you know, it's still capable of producing. Um, and he's just sitting there. Now, the ruling class is going to put him back in the White House. Even though he is not pushing the plantation forward as far as production. Because they have found a way to get production overseas. Now, when those people rise up and throw them out of their countries it may be a problem but until then they love him because he's doing something Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan cannot do Obama is pacifying the worker group he's pacifying melanated people as long as he's there they won't rise up they'll just sit in their slave quarters and they'll wait okay they'll suffer they'll wait as long as he's in the master's house 
and he's not bothering them at all. Now, if he comes down on them and starts oppressing them, then they may rise up. If he leaves, they may rise up. So, I'm not going to vote this time because I know who's going in, especially with the electronic voting machines. Um, let, I want to do a new segment called The Concept of the Week. And this week's concept we're going to talk about is justice. Okay, drink of water. Justice. Now, I define justice as the fair treatment of all living things. Now, justice is pretty straightforward. You, you treat every living element fairly. Now, a very simple example of this is when I was in South Carolina, we lived in those little um, apartments. You had grass in the front, you had grass in the back. And grasshoppers would come through under the door sometimes. And my sister would sweep it. She said, you don't kill them. You sweep it through the back door. Or you sweep it back out the front door. Um, if it came through the front door, I would usually sweep it through the back. Now, that's justice because those grasshoppers had been going through there, traveling through there before those buildings were ever built. Thousands of years. So to kill them would be like you come, plop something down, and then kill them for traveling where they've been. That's a simple way. Now justice can be ugly in a sense. If you warn a people or tell a person, I'm coming to your house next week, I'm going to come in and I'm going to um, snatch your children, I'm going to brutalize your wife, and I'm going to kill you. And you sit there for a whole week and you don't put locks on the door, make sure your door is locked, watch out for people hanging around your, your, your apartment or your house or your place of, of dwelling, and you don't have a bat by the door or a stick by the bed or something to protect yourself. And that person comes back next week on the day they said and the door is wide open. They come in and do what they said. Even though what they're doing is, is hurtful and harmful and they're brutalizing you. That can also be a form of justice because you were warned. So, how does this play out in society? People who look like me are always warned first. Um, we are basically going to shoot your children in the back with our sheriff departments, NYPD, police departments, whatever. We're going to shoot them down and kill them, anybody within a certain age. Or we're going to take them up to our jails and prisons, which are being privatized, and make them work for us for free. And we as a community do nothing. We put no programs in place of our own. We put no system in place of our own. We put no uh, policing on this in our own. And they come and do it to us. It's justice. That's why when I see all of these young people being shot or being hurt or a lot of our children being snatched, even though I, I hate that our children are suffering because it's not their fault, we were supposed to put things in place for them. When I see that, I don't get or I don't feel bad about it necessarily when they do things to us because they warn us when they do it the first time and we do nothing they're gonna that's the warning they're gonna keep doing it they're gonna keep doing it when they start taking programs away that they put in place to keep us off the street and to keep us safe that's their warning they're gonna they're coming after us again we've been through this many cycles I've been this is my second cycle of this so that's this week's concept justice Check out my sponsors. They are um, very wonderful. I have a new sponsors list. Um, it has the sponsors and it has some examples of what they do. Look at the art from my father in law from Freddie Warren. It's pretty good. And the sand bases that my uh, mother in law made. She's one of my sponsors in her business. Um, next week, I'm going to start splitting the show up into two. We're going to go to Tuesday and Thursday. And. 
Um, until next time, please keep thinking and remember your brain is a muscle too. So work it. Take care.